Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to Trucking with T-Bone. Today we're going to be talking about pre-trip inspections. I know what you're thinking. Oh God, not another pre-trip inspection video. This one's a little bit different. Stay tuned, check it out. Okay, welcome back. What I mean by this one's a little bit different. I want to talk about this. Uh, I recently had a friend that almost was unhirable. Reason being, he had a lot of stuff on his PSP report, most of which was his, his fault. He tried to make a switch into uh, the owner op game or the lease purchase game or just a, a, a lease deal. And one of the guys, the guy he was working for, turns out he was not the best person to be working for. With that being said, one of the violations he received was, and it was on his PSP report, was failure to, uh, I, I should rephrase that, cannot transfer ELD records electronically. The reason for this is he was teaming with this gentleman while he was training. Uh, he, was going, he was looking at some flatbed work. The guy was training him. They were running together. Turns out this gentleman had a suspended license. So all his logs, there's a reason they weren't being transferred because they weren't there. Uh, with that being said, he also got a driving over hours of service as well as the cannot transfer the logs. He also got, as well as that one, they got uh, failed to maintain instruction sheet for ELD malfunction reporting requirements. He also got a violation for failing to have the instruction sheet. The instruction sheet part, especially, it's part of the pre-trip. You should know where that sheet is. Mine's right up there. That way, if it's asked for or then you see my logs, I've got the instruction sheet, whatever I need. I cannot express enough. No matter who you're working for, you don't let them dictate what you do. It's your CDL. You have to protect it. With that being said, you also have to protect your CDL in the aspect that you have to do your pre-trip inspections. A lot of these were not taken care of. There was stuff that he should have been doing. I guess he assumed, well, one, he got complacent. Two, he was on the truck with the other gentleman. Most of these violations came from while he was working with this gentleman. Like I said, he was training with him. So I guess he assumed since he owned the truck, the truck was up to snuff and he just kind of got complacent and ran with it. Um, but let me go down this list of inspections or, or violations, I should say. Um, there was some he had, a couple he had before, uh, but all of this that I'm gonna list off stems from that one work experience. And, you know, it wasn't all the same week, but a lot of them was the same day. Um, okay, so we're gonna start off, like I said, ELD cannot transfer ELD records electronically. Driver failing to maintain ELD user's manual. Driver failing to maintain ELD instruction sheet. Driver failed to maintain instruction sheet for ELD malfunction reporting requirements. That's all stuff that should be in the truck. You should know where it is. It should be right there and ready to go if you need it. Uh, driving beyond 14 hour duty period. That was because, like I said, the guy was driving, they were basically teaming. That guy wasn't running his log. Uh, driving beyond 11 hour driving limit, same thing. IRP apportion tag or registration violation. You should have a folder. I've got one right here in the cabinet. It's got all my registration, my insurance, my, DO, my medical card or a copy of my medical card, all that stuff's in one place together. I know where it's at. I'm in the same truck every day, so I know I go through it periodically, just went through it the other day, made sure everything was up to date. Um, state or international fuel tax violation, IFTA. I don't know if he had IFTA stickers on the truck or just didn't have the paperwork for the IFTA stickers. I'm about to choke to death, let me give me a drink. Um, I know I just got my new IFTA stickers in. I haven't put them in on yet. Uh, well, because my truck is nasty at the moment, I want to get it cleaned up a little bit. And I was hoping for a little warmer day before I put them on. But I do have them right here along with the paperwork. Now, 
now here's some other stuff let's get into more detailed stuff more dangerous stuff stuff that's not obvious missing or broken components including pad retaining components and loose or missing caliper mounting bolts that's the brakes you gotta have brakes that's dangerous that's crazy dangerous inoperative brake lamps okay i know it's hard to check the brake lights when you're doing your pre-trip therefore <sighs> there's ways to check them for example I can look and I can see if it's dark, especially I can check and see if the bright, the lights are coming on when I hit the brakes. Otherwise I have my lights on and the flashers on. Generally they are the same lamps. So unless it's a switch in the pedal or somewhere, uh, those, those lamps should light up. No problem. And most of the newer trucks, they, they have a cycle button where it cycles through the flashers, the brights, uh, the tail lights, the turn signals, it cycles through everything. So I don't know what kind of truck it was at the time, but it might've been an older, I'm pretty sure it was an older truck, so it didn't have that feature, but there's ways to check those brake lamps. All right, here's another one. State vehicle registration or license plate violation. Again, that goes with all the stuff that should be in the truck, in that folder, along with your insurance. And all your registrations and trailer registration all that stuff granted if you're switching trailers a lot you should have something in there uh, or the registration should be on the trailer uh, false report of driver's record of duty status I think I've already covered that the person he was driving with no records I know this person that I'm speaking of didn't falsify their logs, but he was hit with a falsifying logs because, well, he didn't know the other guy wasn't doing his logs. <laughs> Again, it was a team situation, so when he was sleeping, the other guy was driving or whatever. Not a great, not a great look for the company, but I don't think the guy cared. Um, let's see, other violation summaries. Excessive weight, 2,500 pounds over on an axle group. Here's where we get into the pre-trip inspection stuff as well as, or the more extensive pre-trip inspection stuff. Tire tread and or sidewall separation. That's something you should notice when you're walking around the truck and you're checking all the tires. That's part of the pre-trip. It's what you're trained to look at. I mean, I, I don't know how you missed that one. Drive shaft yoke ends cracked slash loose slash broken slash missing. I don't know. I could be wrong. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I look at all that stuff when I walk around the truck, but if there's a crack, depending on where it is, I don't know that you would see it. Uh, if it's broke or missing, you're definitely going to see it. Uh, <clears throat> but again, stuff for not looking at, you know, part of the pre-trip part of your post-trip um inoperative brake lamps we already covered that broken components on the brake caliper we've already covered that false report of duty status and operative brake lamps tire flat and or audible leak that's something you should notice i always check my fluids i do my walk around as i'm doing my walk around I come back, I start the truck up, let it air up, build pressure, listen to listen to the hood, make sure there's no leaks there, walk on, you know, around the trailer, make sure there's no leaks there. And uh, I don't know where I'm looking at because I think the camera's over. I'm looking at myself when the camera's actually over here, I do believe, right about there. Anyway, back to it. Failing to use seat belt while operating a CMV. Now, I remember that one. Um told me about that he was going into a truck stop and as he came into the truck stop he took his seat belt off just so happened there was a dot officer right there as he was turning in saw him do it popped him boom so don't take that seat belt off until you're in a spot or at least to a spot you're getting ready to back into because i know i do that when i'm getting ready to back in i take the seat belt off so i can lean out the window but i'm usually stopped 
where I'm about to back in before I do that. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Here's another one I remember that happened to him. Improper securement of stacked loads of paper rolls transported with the eyes vertical in a sided vehicle. So paper rolls. I'm sure everybody has done or does paper rolls. These paper rolls, you've got the really tall rolls and you've got the shorter stubby rolls. I always get up there, well, especially since he got that ticket. I always get up in there and I at least put a strap or two across to at least make it look pretty. We all know those paper rolls, those little straps ain't gonna do jack for those paper rolls. If they're gonna go, they're gonna go. However, I do that with every load, not just the paper loads. I put the straps in there, that way they can't get me for unsecured load. It's there, make it look pretty for the DOT. Um, brake connections with leaks or constrictions. Brake hose or tubing chafing and or kink, kinking connection to power unit. So if your airlines or your pigtails are dragging across the, uh, the catwalk, there's a good chance they're gonna get chafed. Um, you need to make sure you lift those up, give them, give them some space in there so they're not, uh, no chance of them getting cut. I just had mine get cut. And they weren't even chafing, so I don't know what they got cut on. I think they may have just been old. Um, EOD cannot transfer EOD records electronically. We already covered that. Uh, driving beyond 14 hour. Anyway, that's a quite a list of, uh, I think that covers all of them. But that's a quite a list of violations. And most of these were in October of last year. Yep, October, October. This was May of last year. Defecting September. He was kind enough to send me a SPSP. I knew some people. I was trying to help him find a job, but he was damn near unhirable with all these violations. Uh, he, did ha he did have a couple of little incidents. Wasn't anything major. Um, to go along with these violations, but just the list of violations. Let's see, let's look at the summary up here. Driver inspections, eight. Driver out of service inspections, one. Uh, vehicle out of service inspections, five. Vehicle inspections, seven. So five out of seven inspections, he was out of service. Uh, hazmat inspections, one. Out of service, hazmat inspection, zero. Vehicle out of service rate, vehicle out of service rate. 71%, that should be zero. It should be zero if you're doing all those things correctly, your pre-trip, your post-trip, etc. cetera. Um, I'm not gonna call the guy out on here. He knows who he is, he knows I was doing the video. Told him I was gonna do the video. Um, but yeah, long story short, your CDL, you have to protect it. Like I said, the guy almost couldn't get a job. I reached out to someone I knew and luckily they gave him a chance. He's doing well now. So protect that CDL, do your pre-trips, do your post-trips. Don't give them a reason to put you out of service or to make you unhirable. Um, I guess that's all I got. I just, I've been wanting to do this video for a minute and I actually had time to sit down and do it. Um, I may see if I can't get on with a couple of people and do a live about this and, and, and I'll discuss it. But with that said, thanks for trucking with T-Bone. I hope this helps you out. If you are getting your CDL or already have your CDL and just got complacent and just like, oh, it's good. Uh, I hope this helps somebody out. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for trucking with T-Bone. Hit that like, subscribe, share, and we will see you later.